What's up guys, Mr. Slin here with another video about Team Fortress 2. Today, I want to teach you all how to read the scoreboard, which will help you figure out when to get aggressive, when to play defensively, and help you make better decisions when you're playing, whether you're a competitive player or a casual player. So let's hop right into it. I'm going to be doing a live commentary playing on one of my favorite maps, which is uh, Upward. And... Basically, the idea behind reading the scoreboard is that you check how many teammates are on your side that are alive, check how many opponents on their side that are alive, then you make a split-second decision as to who's winning or who's losing, and then that informs your decisions. Because unfortunately, in Team Fortress, there's no mini-map, there's no like radar telling you where your opponents are, and so a lot of making the right decision has to do with context clues. Looking at your teammates, whether or not they're pushing forward, looking at your opponents, look at where the spam is coming from, and what you're hearing. I think what you're hearing in Team Fortress is really underrated. But all those things help you make the right decisions and help lead to a, a, a good KD. So I'm gonna be trying to kill this scout and failing to do so, jeez Louise. But I think my general my general concept for like when I when I check the scoreboard is it has to do with the spawn waves. So in Team Fortress, uh, well, okay, for example, on this on this map, payload up upward, the blue team is on offense, so they're gonna have shorter spawns than the red team. So the blue team's gonna, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. Blue team's going to respawn every eight to ten seconds or so, and the red team's gonna re respawn every ten to twenty seconds or so. So, I don't need to check the scoreboard every second, because the game doesn't change that quickly. But I do need to check the scoreboard every 10 seconds or so, to kind of get an idea of who's winning and who's losing. And right now, the red team has three more players alive, so I'm going to get aggressive on that. And that's kind of how it works. It's like, our, te oh, our red team's getting a lot of kills right now, so now we're going to keep pushing forward and continue to extend our lead. That's kind of the goal there. Then once I check the respawners again, a couple red players are dying, a couple blue, blue players are respawning. So now I'm going to retreat, get health, reload, that kind of thing. Um, something that a lot of low-level players don't really do, that high-level players will do, is read the kill feed. Uh, and above my head you see the kill feed, which tells you whenever a player uh, gets killed. And, <laughs> as the name implies. Uh, that's extremely valuable because as nice as the, the scoreboard is, it's not the perfect solution because oh, my, tra my scoreboard, for example, is, is clear. So I can see all the way through it. The downside, though, is that every time I open my scoreboard, I can't see my crosshair. And so you kind of have to strike a balance between opening the scoreboard a lot to check when people are dead and alive and then not opening it too much so that you can't aim or play the game properly. So a lot of opening the scoreboard has to do with the timing of it. Now, uh, once they introduced the casual and competitive matchmaking modes into this game, they did add that HUD element to the top of the screen that lets you check who's alive and who's dead without having to hit tab. And I think that's incredibly useful, uh, especially if you are a casual player and you play a lot of casual, then you'll probably get used to reading that thing at the top of the screen. But I like to keep my eyes in the center of the screen. I'm kind of an old school player. So you'll see me oftentimes uh, hitting tab even though that thing exists up there. And right now we are crushing them. We are just spawn camping the bejesus out of these guys. <laughs> and as I say that, I feed. Um, that's kind of the general concept for how you want to play. Now, when I say read the scoreboard, You'll notice that my scoreboard looks different than a lot of your scoreboards. Uh, for one, uh, I work with a guy who edits my HUDs. Big shout out to Aurora who edited the HUD. If you want to download it, it's in the description below. Uh, but you'll notice that my scoreboard doesn't have ping on it. And I had Aurora remove the ping on purpose because I find the ping to be very distracting. Uh, especially when it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care what the ping is of my opponents. I don't care what the ping is of my, myself. If I do want to check what it is, I, I hit console, I type ping, I see everybody's ping once, and then it doesn't really change for the rest of the night, you know? A lot of, a lot of players out there will uh, add, add some console commands to their scoreboard, like netgraph1, 
which will tell them their ping and their FPS. It's really not necessary, in my opinion, unless your your ping and your FPS are fluctuating a lot. That's not something you need to check very often. And that's why I emphasize how often you check the scoreboard as well. It has a lot to do with the way the respawn ways work, and not because, uh, hopefully not because you're just forgetful. So every time you open the scoreboard, it should be at the point in time that you're about to make a decision. So I'm killing this guy, I'm killing this guy. Right when I kill him, I check the scoreboard to see what my next decision is going to be. Because I've already used six shots, it's going to take me time to reload some of those shots. I'm going to turn around, away from the battlefield, and then check the scoreboard. That's a perfect time to check. When you're retreating from the front lines and you're trying to make the next decision. When I'm fighting someone, I'm obviously not bringing up the scoreboard. And as I mentioned, I do not want to be using my scoreboard when I'm actively fighting. So how do I understand, how do I know when to make the right decision when I'm in the middle of battle? Well, the answer to that, as I alluded to earlier, is the kill feed. So at the top right of my screen, I don't pay attention to who is alive and who's dead, although in high level competitive matches I will. But in these casual servers, it doesn't really matter, the names are all random anyways. What I'm mostly paying attention to is red first, blue second, or blue first, red second. If it's red first, blue second, that means we got a kill. That means we're winning. That means green light, go ahead. Try and get more kills. If it's blue first, red second, that means, oh my god, a lot of my teammates are dying. Play safe. And you'll notice that I'm still shooting people as I'm somehow reading the kill feed. And that's just gonna take time. Don't expect to pick up on this right away. It takes a lot of practice, but it's something to actively work towards as you're playing the game. Use your peripheral vision to read the kill feed and let the kill feed inform your decisions. Let the kill feed let you know, oh, wow, we got a kill, time to get aggressive. Or wow, we just got a bunch of us killed, time to play safe. I think it's very important to read the kill feed. Um, for those of you guys who use really, really big monitors, it becomes actually harder to read the kill feed when you have a huge monitor because it's harder to see up into that corner. So if you have a smaller monitor, it's actually, it actually benefits you uh, because you can actually just you know like look up not as far to see that kill feed. Um, the problem with the kill feed though is that once it gets into like five plus events, event each event being like a kill, or an assist, or like a domination, or a kill streak. After you see like five different notifications, you kind of lose track of what's going on. And that's why you need to tab. So, you, you, so when nothing's happening, like, like right now, I tab, I check the scoreboard, and I memorize it. I don't memorize it, memorize it, but I, I, I flash memorize, okay, nothing's happening. And then for the next five seconds, I'll be reading the scoreboard, noticing the blue team is getting kills and thinking, wow, this is great. And then I will recheck the scoreboard to re-memorize the scoreboard again. Does that make sense? And so the, the scoreboard is the source of truth. The, sor the scoreboard is where you go to get the, the definition of who's winning and who's losing. But after I check the scoreboard once, I don't need to keep checking the scoreboard. I simply look at the kill feed. But look how, look how many sapper kills there were right there. Like, is that really telling me anything about what's going on right now other than there's a spy on a sentry gun somewhere? No. So I need to reset and remind myself, okay, looks like blue team's winning right now. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't need to like spend a lot of time looking at the scoreboard. As you can see, I just kind of flash it in front of myself and then take it down. And the, the more you do it, the faster you'll get. So when you first start doing it, you'll probably be pretty bad at it. But you kind of learn how to read it quickly by just kind of looking at a, gen a general idea of colors. It's kind of like, have you guys ever played like uh, those rhythm those rhythm games like a Dance Dance Revolution or Guitar Hero? You're not really looking at the notes. You're not really looking at the arrows as they fly down your screen. You're just kind of getting a general sense of them and your body just kind of is just trained to know what to do next in some weird way. That's generally what I'm going for as I hit tab. Again, you could totally use that HUD element at the top of the screen. You know, the black and white avatars will tell you that it's time to go or it's time to back off. But what you definitely do not want to be doing is get too tunnel visioned on your gameplay. 
Don't get so tunnel vision on what's going on in front of you that you forget to check the kill feed, that you forget to check the scoreboard. Because that is the most important part. Because, again, there is no radar in TF2. There's no way for you to know what's going around in the next corner. And you don't want to be surrounded, you don't want to make bad decisions. Look, I'm 21 kills and 2 deaths right now. Partially because my team has, I think it's a stronger team than their team. But I think the other reason is because I'm, I'm making the right decision when to get aggressive, when to back off. I can see that my team is winning, and so I'm going to get aggressive and try and win even harder. When my team is losing, I'm going to play it safe and wait for them to respawn. There's no point in me getting aggressive by myself when I'm just outnumbered and probably going to lose. You can see that I, ret I oftentimes retreat to the safety of my teammates because uh, that's how we regroup as a team. That's how you, get, you group up together and you make a play happen. Now, I know we have number advantage here, so I can get behind them and miss their medic a bunch. <laughs> but I had the right idea on the play, that's the important part. Like, I'm not going to make that, that kind of decision when I know that they completely outnumber us. But if we outnumber them, they're so focused, they're so distracted with, the, with what's going on in the front lines that they cannot even turn around to deal with me right now. And that's kind of how you make decisions in Team Fortress. It's like, oh, now I'm hurt, now I'm reloading. Okay, then I'm going to back off, right? Oh, they have, they have huge number advantage? Okay, let's, 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 let's back off. Let, or now we have number advantage, let's push forward. And as you can see right there, there was like five red players dead. So I could have definitely gotten aggressive instead of capturing there, but I decided to cap instead. I could have, while there's so many red uh, players dead, I could have opted to go push forward and kill that sentry gun. That would have been a smart decision to make as well. But now I know that they're five dead. I'm going to try and clear out their flank because it's probably pretty weak right now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I'm gonna try and distract the sentry gun and make it look at me over here. And that way, someone can hopefully peek the main doorway and shoot at it while it's shooting at me. Because the sentry gun doesn't turn very quickly, so if I can get it to waste shots on me... No you don't, Busta. There we go, sentry gun down. And now that there's seven dead, I can push forward. I would never do this if they outnumbered me. I would never do this. But this is like completely open for me. Look how many dead red players there are. Oh no! Complete noob mistake. Absolutely embarrassing. I can't believe that's recorded. <laughs> Alright, you kind of get the idea here. So hopefully we can win out this round. Uh, if you guys have any questions on how to read the scoreboard, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if any of you guys are using that HUD element up top, because I think it does have value, but I just haven't trained myself to use it because I've been so in tune with like the scoreboard for many years. I just don't use that thing up top anymore. But it actually is kind of useful in theory because these little tickets fall down that kind of tell you what's going on. These little, these little flags, these little tabs fall down from the sky telling you, and you can quickly t count out the number of tabs and understand who's winning and who's losing. But yeah, that's a round of, uh, that's a round of Upward. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if I'm going to do a brief summary or a brief recap of the concepts in this video, I would say uh, check your scoreboard whenever you need to make a decision. So if, if you're in a position where you don't know what to do next, whether you should push or back off, you should just tab, get a sense of who's winning, and then make, it, make your decision based off of the tab. The faster you get at that, the better you'll get. Use the kill feed whenever uh, you feel like there's not a lot of action going on so that you don't need to keep hitting tab. You can just check the kill feed every once in a while, and, or sorry, you can check the scoreboard every once in a while, and then really use the kill feed to tell you the immediate changes uh, as they happen, the breaking news, so to speak. And then um, whenever you have the advantage, make sure you get aggressive. So when you have health, when you have uh, ammo reloaded, when you have number advantage, go for it. And when you're reloading, you're backing away from the front lines, when you need a breather and you need to grab some, you know, wait for your teammates to respawn, that's the perfect time to back off. So thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.